Hey, I'm Red, and today we're gonna go over the simple music theory behind Lil Durk's shootout at my crib. And how you can use it to make your own Lil Durk type melodies. I don't wanna waste your time, so let's get into it. First, this chord progression was made in the key of D sharp minor. As you know, every minor scale has seven basic triad chords, from one to seven. These chords are built on the seven notes of the scale with notes on the respective roots, thirds, and fifths. These ones are major, and these ones are minor. And this one is a diminished chord, which doesn't sound very good, so we don't use it very often. Now, Shootout uses a simple 1 6 progression throughout the whole beat. Now, why did they choose these chords? Well, I think it's because of the emotion that a drop of third has in a melody. What I mean by that is that it's really common for emotional progressions to have somewhere in them a drop of three diatonic notes in the chords. Diatonic notes are the notes that are a part of the scale you're using. The most common of them are either 1-3, three, 3-6, three, or 1-6. In fact, this method is used so often to get emotional progressions that I was able to make this table full of examples of songs that use this in just a few minutes. So that is why they chose these chords because it makes the progression more emotional. Now let's move on to the top melody. Now on your screen you're seeing three different colors on the notes of the top melody. These greenish colors represent chordal notes. This means notes that are the same as the ones we used on the chords directly below them. As you know, right in beats 1 and 3 are the places where we usually want to have these chordal notes. These notes sound good but make the progression predictable and not very interesting. That's why we have these other yellowish notes. These notes represent dissonance. These are intervals that don't sound very good and make the progression sound incomplete. In this case, when I say dissonance, I mean intervals of a second, which means one diatonic note above our root. These notes help bring movement into the track. They help us make the listener feel like this progression is going somewhere. That's why they are never in important places like downbeats and why they are are short notes in comparison to these longer ones here. Lastly, the purple represents imperfect non-chordal consonances. These are notes that don't sound as good as the chordal notes here, but don't sound as weird as the dissonances. In this case, when I say imperfect consonants, I mean intervals of 6 and 4, which means they are either 6 or 4 diatonic notes above our root. Quick FYI, the 4 is technically not an imperfect consonant, but it's still not a chordal note, so I'm pairing it with the 6, just in this case. Having a nice balance of consonants and dissonance helps keep the progression interesting. Okay, that was a lot of information. So in case you got lost at any point, here's a quick simpler explanation. I divided the notes into these three groups. Notes that sound good with the chords, which are chordal notes, so this ones. Notes that sound okay with the chords, which are non-chordal notes, so this ones. And notes that don't sound very good with the chords, which are both non-chordal notes and dissonances. In this case, that means only the interval 2, which is this note. And the way they use these notes to make a good sounding top melody is by following these three steps. First, they kept the chordal notes on downbeats 1 and 3 which are this ones. 2. They used short dissonances not placed on downbeats to add the feeling that the progression is going somewhere. You can listen to that effect by concentrating on these points. See if you catch how they make it feel like the progression needs to keep moving when they play. And lastly, they added some non-chordal consonances here to make the progression sound less predictable. You can listen to that effect here. Here I changed some of the non-chordal consonances to chordal consonances. See if you can catch how the progression sounds way more predictable and robotic now. One last thing I want to point out is that this melody doesn't add a lot of notes on each bar. It adds only about three top melody notes on every bar, which helps create a feeling of suspense on this melody because it decides to take its rest at the non-chordal dissonances, which like I said before, make this progression sound less predictable. And also, like always, this melody has an up in the beginning and down in the end shape, but they all do that, so nothing new here. And that's why they added those notes. Okay, so now that we know why this melody sounds the way it does, we can start applying that information to our own beat. First, I'll start the same 1-6 chord progression. To make that sound fuller, I'll double some of the notes in different octaves. Now, 
Now we can move on to the top melody. To make this top melody, I will be following these rules. 1. Chordal notes on downbeats, but we already know that. 2. Around 3 notes per beat. 3. I'll try to mix dissonant and non-chordal consonant notes around beats 2 and 4. And 4. Descending chord progression in the end. And with those rules in mind, this is the melody I came up with. Again, I color coded this note so you can see where each type of note is placed. Now that we have the main melody, all that's left is to make a full beat from here. To do that, I'm going to add three main things. One, texture, two, counter melody, and three, ambience melody. For the texture, I rendered the same melody and added a bunch of effects to it. For the counter melody, I added this very simple violin. And for the ambience pad, I added this very simple spacey bell lead and some vocals. This is what they all sound like together. For the arrangement, I started with a tape effect on the piano, then moved into a distorted bass, right before taking the main melody out and introducing the drums. This will help create space for the drums and vocals, otherwise it would have been too full. And with that, the bit is finished. If you want to use this melody loop, there's a download link in the description, use it however you want, just credit me if you end up using it. If you want to see more music theory videos, there's a bunch already on my channel and more coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you subscribe if you like. Anyway, here's the final beat. See ya.